Hey, this is Kevin with Gunsumer Reports, and I've got here the new Ruger PC carbine. And in this part of my review, I'm going to show disassembly and some of the internal features. Now, as I go through and uh, follow the steps associated with disassembly, I'm going to be following pretty much Ruger's instruction manual that they have here. I mean, honestly, Ruger does really a good job, in my opinion, with their instruction manual. And they go into a lot of detail, so if for some reason you get lost with, with what I'm showing here, you can always refer back to that. And you should really always consider the manufacturer's instruction manual or owner's manual is really the, the primary source whenever you're doing anything with your firearm. As always, one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to unload your firearm. And uh, I'm trying to do it here so I can keep the carbine in the center of the view of the camera but you're going to unload take out the magazine okay make sure that the uh, chambers empty bolts to the rear so when I push the bolt to the rear pulled it to the rear I pushed up on the uh, bolt stop right here to hold it in that position now I can go through and remove the barrel assembly by using the takedown feature and to do that I'll just pull this stud that sticks out right there I'll either pull it forward or push it forward, however you want to say that. Rotate it about 45 degrees, and then the barrel assembly will come out of the receiver. Just like that. Next, I'm going to remove the polymer forend from the barrel assembly. And to do that, I'm going to use the large Allen wrench that was provided with the firearm. And I'm going to loosen or remove the screw here that you can see right there and I'll do that here and it's got quite a bit of torque most likely it was torqued to that 65 inch pounds and seems like it's got a lot of uh, resistance coming out potentially like it has thread locker on it this is the first time I pulled it out so I'm not not 100% sure but uh, so when I loosened it, you can see here the uh, the two parts, and clearly it had uh, a lot of thread locker in there. I'm not sure if you really ever need to to pull this apart unless you're really trying to do a deep cleaning on the the barrel itself. Uh, as long as you keep your your firearm you know out of dust, dirt, and rain, um, then you may never have to do this. But if you do it, just be prepared that. Uh, it does have thread locker there that you may or may not want to replace in the future. The next step is to remove the receiver from the stock portion here. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to let the bolt go all the way forward like that. And then I'm going to loosen these two screws right here, but I'm not going to pull them all the way out. And I'm again, I'm going to use the large Allen wrench that was provided with the firearm to do that and they've been torqued to the 65 inch pounds so they're a little snug but these don't have any thread locker on them and if you watch the uh, previous part of the review you can you know you will have seen that I've already done this once to go through and change out the magazine inserts now once you loosen them about like that they kind of get loose right there and you can pull this receiver assembly out of the stock here. The first time I did it the receiver assembly was actually uh, pretty tight and I really had to kind of jiggle it to, to get it out of the stock but uh, eventually it came. Since then it, uh, it, it really just slides out without any real issue Next, I'm going to remove the trigger guard assembly that you see right here. And there are two pins that are located here and here. And I'm just going to push those pins out. And actually, I think I can use the same Allen wrench uh, that I used to loosen the stock bolts. I can use that same Allen wrench to push those pins out. And you'll see I've got them started right there. I'll go ahead and pull them out the rest of the way and then I can lift this trigger assembly here out of the receiver. 
Now, Ruger recommends that you do not disassemble the trigger guard further from the, the condition that you have it right here. And most likely, if you're not familiar with working with firearms, and if you want your firearm to work uh, in the future, then I would recommend not disassembling it further than you have it right here. And for cleaning purposes, I think this is about as far down as you need to go with the uh, trigger assembly. Ruger also gives instructions on pulling the bolt assembly out of the receiver. And one of the first things that they say is basically make sure the bolt is in the forward position, which it is right here. Then they, you're going to need to remove the charging handle right there. And I'll go ahead and continue to use the same Allen wrench to remove the charging handle. Right now, it is torqued to the 65 inch pounds, but uh, I loosened it there. So I'll take the charging handle off. And Ruger basically says here at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to lift up here on the back portion of what I think they're calling the uh, buffer and you're going to lift the bolt assembly out of the receiver. So I haven't done this yet and uh, so we'll just see how well it goes for a first time on video. So I'm lifting up on the buffer and I'm tilting the bolt up as I come. and then pulling the bolt assembly out. It wasn't too bad for a first time. I did it a couple of more times. I'd probably get a little bit more graceful in doing that. But uh, wow, man, I tell you what, this bolt is beefy. Wow, it's got some weight to it. I believe it's a chrome molly uh, heat treated bolt. And um, I think it has advertised to have tungsten weights in it. Uh, for cycling reasons, but it's definitely a beefy piece of material. But now, now that I've got the bolt out, um, you can see that the, for the receiver assembly, the aluminum receiver definitely feels uh, much lighter in weight when you remove the bolt. Another thing you might want to notice here is that the first time you take it down, Ruger very liberally oils or lubricates their uh, receiver components on this platform. And actually I think they do it on a lot of their platforms, but you can clearly see the, uh, the reason I have the green rag down right now over my red bench is just to ensure that I don't get my red bench all covered with, with oil. Now I'm going to follow Ruger's instructions to disassemble the bolt further. So I'm going to start out by sliding this recoil assembly spring there and so now you have a bolt basically the bolt assembly here and you can see the tungsten weight sitting right inside there. Next Ruger says you're going to push in on the bolt face right here. Well, you can tell right there you're going to push in on the bolt face right there and then turn the assembly over and these two retaining pins right there and there are going to fall out. So I'll just do that. There went one and there went the other one right there. Now, what I need to do is the extractor over here, I need to remove that extractor pin and let the extractor come out. And so to do that, I'm going to push in on the side of the extractor right here, and I'm going to pull the pin out. If I can get just enough force in there. Yeah, I can get it with my fingernails. All right, so I pulled that pin out right there, and so the extractor here comes out along with the spring there and now I can pull the bolt face or head out of the bolt body itself. Now that it's out I can rotate the assembly over and pull out the firing pin and the firing pin spring right there. Now I can just flip this whole unit over and the tungsten weight is actually captured by the firing pin. So overall, 
I mean, it's really pretty simple uh, pulling this pulling this assembly down, and I think it's you know it's within the um, capability I think of just just about anybody to do it. For cleaning purposes, yeah, I can definitely see pulling this this assembly apart for cleaning purposes. Again, I'm not sure I'd recommend pulling the trigger apart because uh, I think you can probably blow it out and and clean it without issue there, but. Uh, I might recommend going ahead and pulling the, the bolt assembly down to this level and cleaning it. I want to point out a couple of things that I've noticed in pulling this apart. And clearly the, the first thing you'll notice is that this is, a, again, this is a beefy piece of steel here. But it's very interesting, this tungsten weight that they have right here, it's, uh, you know, it, it, gets, it clearly is a heavy part. And the thing that I find interesting on this when I look at this tungsten weight and think about what the opportunities that it provides is that you know for a relatively small effort this weight and also the bolt face let me see if I can get it to where you can, it'll focus on it can you see how what how thick the sides of the uh, the bolt face the edges around there are to me that just looks like I can envision Ruger at some point in the future making a, a bolt face or bolt face insert like you see right here to be able to accommodate other calibers. I mean, I really can see that. Also, the weight that we have here maybe gives the opportunity for Ruger to tune the exact same bolt body here to be able to accommodate the uh, recoil that might be required for we'll say 40 Smith and Wesson or 45 ACP or maybe some other caliber. Anyway, to me, I, I, I'm looking at all this and thinking that I'm going to see the PC carbine come out in another caliber in the near future. Overall, the uh, the components are I think are relatively simple, and you know when I look at it, they look uh, to be very. There's a lot of detail that went into machining this. Uh, particular bolt here but um, to me it just looks like there's been a lot of detail that Ruger put into machining this this product overall. Next I'm going to show reassembly which is really just the reverse of disassembly but there is one step that's a little bit different and I'll go ahead and drop in the tungsten weight here. I'll slide in the firing pin and spring in there. Now what I'll do is go ahead and install this bolt face insert right here first and install the two retaining pins here and I'll do that before I install the ejector. I'm sorry the extractor because it'll hold the bolt face in place. Now I can go through and put the spring back in place for the extractor. I can take the uh, extractor itself, get it approximately where it should be, and then I can install the, uh, the cam pin right there. And there it slid in place. So pretty simple. I can reinstall now the recoil spring here if I can get it started in those slots easily. Yeah, there, there we went. Okay. And now I can drop this assembly back into the upper receiver. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop the bolt assembly back into the upper receiver. And remember when you do this that the uh, recoil spring right here is going to be down. So I'm just going to kind of slide it into place and push it all the way forward. I'm going to slightly compress the recoil spring here and slide it down into place and then give it a good push to where that buffer uh, plate back there kind of snaps into place and it should be should be in place just like it's supposed to be right there. I'll go ahead and loosely install for now charging handle 
and I've taken this thing um, apart so many times at this point eventually uh, I'm probably going to have the charging handle on the left hand side but just for the purposes of this review I keep putting it back on the right hand side we'll just snug that just a little bit I'll come back and torque it torque it later okay and so the uh, receiver assembly is back together I'm going to uh, set this aside for the moment I've already shown in a different part of the review part three about pulling out the magazine inserts and to do that you'll press the magazine release button here and pull the insert up now the Ruger SR9 magazine insert I'm going to try to get it to where you can see it has a little latch here on the front I'm pushing the bottom part of that latch I don't know if you can see it in there but they say that you should push that latch forward while you're pulling it out but just like I demonstrated pulling it out just then let me slide it back into place push the magazine latch slide it back into place and you can see it's all the way down here that really all I have to do is push the magazine button in place and it just pulls right out so you can do that to be able to switch this out between your SR9 and your Glock magazine inserts I also showed in the other part of the review all you have to do is loosen that screw right there because it's spring loaded kind of keep your thumb right here on top of this button and uh, take the screw out you can take the two components the screw and this and the body of the magazine latch right here and you just flip them from one side to the other to be able to switch it out between the two from a left hand to a right hand side uh, magazine release I covered it in the previous part but I'll go ahead and cover it again here just real quick you're going to use the middle size Allen wrench that Ruger provided and you're going to stick it here into the holes that you see right there in the butt pad and when you do that you'll find that it'll, it will nest inside an Allen head screw if I can get it to nest in there. Let's see here. Let me try the other one. It'll nest right inside there. Yeah, right there. And then you can just loosen it up and spin that bolt out, take the bolt all the way off, and then you can either, uh, for both of them, and then you can either add more spacers or remove spacers to adjust the length of pull. Go ahead and tighten that back up. There we go. To reinstall the trigger assembly, you know, you can remember there were two pins that you pushed out, so you're basically going to put that in place and then line up your two pins. And there's really no force that's on these two pins. You can see they just slide in place, and then you'll kind of use your fingers and get them to be right uh, in the center of the receiver itself so that now you can take this receiver assembly and drop it into your stock so let me put this magazine insert back okay it's in place I'm going to take my receiver assembly I'm going to drop it back into the stock like that just like that then I would go through with the largest Allen wrench that Ruger provided and I will tighten down the screws front and back and then come back and do a final torque to 65 inch pounds. All right. I'll have to do final torque on those and reinstall the hand guard here back on the barrel assembly. You may want to clean off the Loctite or the threads and apply more Loctite. It's a little bit firm going back in only because there was the Loctite that was on it. I'll just snug it down for now. I'll probably go back and clean that up. I'm not sure if I'll go back and put Loctite on it, but I'm going to go back and clean the threads up a little bit better. 
Then you can go through, pull your bolt back, lock it in place, and reinstall your barrel. Just like that. Remember, Ruger states that to, to help seat your takedown feature to cycle your bolt a few times. And there you have it. That was a uh, disassembly and reassembly of the Ruger PC carbine. Overall, I'd say that disassembly and reassembly of the Ruger PC carbine is, is pretty simple. And I think it's something that, that most people could do without really having to, to be a gunsmith or anything like that. The instruction manual is, uh, is good. Like I mentioned earlier, I was basically following the steps along with the instruction manual. Some of the things that I did for disassembly, I did them for the first time. If you go through and you, you disassemble, reassemble a couple of times uh, over the years, I'm sure you'll uh, get to be more efficient or faster than I just did it. I don't, I don't think it, it really took me that long to do it. But overall, I'm really, really happy with the platform that uh, Ruger's got here, and I think they've built the platform just looking at some of the components that makes me think that one day we're going to see the PC carbine and other calibers. Anyway, if you like this review, please like, subscribe, or both, and I'll try to keep bringing detailed reviews in the future. Thanks.